If you have a Winnebago Revel model year 2021 or newer, your water inlet to fill the tank or hook up to city water is on the inside, right here. And I found a blog post explaining why they moved it. Let me quote. Based on Winnebago's voice of customer research, they found Revel owners were keeping the rear doors open, so they moved the water inlet to a more convenient spot. Well, of course, that was the right decision. Thank you, Winnebago, for doing that. Well, no, that was a horrible decision. It doesn't make any sense to have the fresh water connect on the inside. Nobody wants to sleep with their doors open when on a campground. And even if you want to, you can leave the doors open without having the external water connected. So in this video, I want to move the water connect to the outside. However, I also want to retain the inside connection. Not because I will ever use it, I wouldn't really know for what, but if I ever sell the van, which is unlikely, or if I let someone borrow it, which is extremely unlikely, I don't want to explain to them any functions that are not covered in the manual or by the standard Winnebago um, online tutorials. So that's why I will be adding an external water connection while keeping the inside one. The water tank lives behind this panel. So I guess removing it is the first step. Most of the screws the panel is attached with are behind these covers. Oh. The ones that go into the floor are um, self-tapping sheet metal type screws and the ones that attach to the rear wall are regular wood screws. The ones on top are also sheet metal screws with a larger head. And last but not least, there is a bunch of screws that the rear window cover is attached with. These black ones. It looks like the lower panel is tucked in behind the upper one. So I removed these screws as well. And there's a lip from this panel behind this one. So I think if I want to remove this one, I have to remove the upper one and I'm not going to do that. And I don't think it is needed because I can bend it forward enough to get access to the water panel and all the piping. That will hopefully do and gives me the access I need and I hope I can complete my project without taking out the entire panel, which means I don't have to take out the upper panel in order to take out the lower panel. Well, let's see how that works. I want my external water fill to come in from the bottom, so I have to drill a hole into the van floor. Um, this is behind the water panel. This here, this blue line, this is the um, tank overflow. And there's a little bit of space, I'm not sure if you can see that, in front of this blue pipe and next to the water pump, which is over here. I'm not sure if you can see the tip of my tape measure, about three inches forward of this pipe and a little bit offset to the left to the driver's side is where I want the hole from the bottom to come out of. So I'm going to drill from the bottom and hopefully I don't hit my water pump. So once I have drilled the hole through the floor I'm going to install this bulkhead fitting here. On the outside I'm gonna attach this quick disconnect for a garden hose and then on the inside I'm attaching this adapter that converts to PEX. 
so I can continue to the inside plumbing on this side with like half inch pecs. Well, I hope I measured correctly. Drilling holes into my van is not my favorite hobby. Well, that's not too bad. At least I didn't damage anything. Well, on the inside I have to cut the hole a little bit bigger so this flange will fit in and sit against the actual van floor, not the Winnebago floor. So I have to cut this out, the plastic and the insulation with, well, maybe a utility knife. I also want to clean up the hole that I just cut and add a little bit of rust protection. Well, I guess now it's a good time to remove the water panel and then I have easier access to, to the hole. It has a total of, I think, five or six connections. So this one is for the hot water tap on the outside. This is easy. I can just unscrew this. For all the other ones, and I marked them, I marked the, the hose that comes in, like this is a one, and it attaches to this T, and I mark this with the one as well. Then there's two, three, four, five, I guess. And I have to undo them all by cutting through the PEX crimp ring, and then hopefully I can just slide the hose off. Do that five times, and I can remove the entire water panel. And hopefully I can get it back together then. For an even more personal touch, I added some blood stains. These PEX crimp rings have really sharp edges once they are cut open. Quick beauty shot from the inside of the plumbing area. Here's this new hole that I drilled. And now I need to apply some rust protection. While the paint dries on the van, I can tackle the modification of my water panel. It turns out that the red handle in the Revel is not being used. So if you look at the back, it has these three open connectors, one, two, and three, and this is a diverter valve. So depending on the, the, the way the handle is turned, it connects either these two ports or these two, this one up here. Now, my idea is that I'm using, this is the existing water inlet, the one that is, well, inside of the van, tank fill and city water hookup. On the back, it is this one. So I'm gonna cut this line right here and attach it to one of the ports of the, of the red handles diverter valve. And then I'm attaching my new external fill to the other port of the diverter valve, the one up here. And then the output of that diverter valve, which is either my new external hookup or the existing internal hookup comes out here. And I'm gonna attach this one to this one here, which is where right now the only city water hookup connects to. So basically I'm cutting this line and splice in the diverter valve. So with the diverter I can then select either the current internal water hookup or my new external one. This way I'm retaining the internal one, I'm adding the external one, and with the red handle I can select which of the two ports I'm using, either this one or the new one that I'm installing outside of the van. So this is the original water inlet. I'm gonna unscrew this and then add a new fitting here, angle fitting here. And I'm connecting it to this one, one side of the red diverter valve. And I put that pipe here in between. Before someone tells me I should be using Teflon tape on the threads, well, these fittings seal with an O-ring. They don't seal via the threads. So, I mean, you 
can add a Teflon tape if you like, but that's not where the seal is made. Well, hand tight should be good enough. I don't want to over tighten and then crush the seal. To connect the outlet of the diverter valve with where the original inlet connected to, I'm using this braided PVC vinyl, the PVC vinyl tubing, reinforced vinyl tubing, because that saves me from using several 90 degree bends. So this is just one smooth curve now. That is it. So the existing inside water inlet port connects to one side of the red diverter valve. Then my new external water connection goes in here, connects to the other side of the red diverter valve. And then the outlet of the diverter valve goes through this vinyl tube to where the original inlet connected to. So if the handle, the red handle, is set to this port, then the existing inside water connection is connected to here, where it always was. was. And if the handle is turned the other way, then my external port is connected to this one. That should work. Now I can pre-assemble my bulkhead fitting and I'm using Teflon tape on this one. I added a little bit of caulking and now I can drop it into the hole and screw it in from the bottom. The caulking is not really for water sealing. That is all done inside of the bulkhead fitting. It is more for additional, I guess, rust prevention and avoid any metal to metal contact. I also had to make this wedge shape thing here because the hole that I cut into the floor isn't exactly flat that is because the ridges that are in the floor and with this wedge at least well it will be flat here it is well now I can put the panel back in place and attach it to all the existing well pre-existing um, hoses and hopefully I can do that in the right order starting with this one okay I put all the hoses back on and now I have to somehow get to the crimp fittings to the PEX fittings like this one right here and I think this will be impossible with the camera in one hand so let me put the camera away and get them all attached. The only missing connection is the one to the external water inlet. I didn't really know where the pipes would end so now with the panel back in place I need to kind of figure it out and then cut a pipe or maybe a hose to length and hopefully I can still get in there to attach it. Well if not that would be really bad. I should be able to reach the top of this new external water connection pipe through this little 
access hole here. See, this is the blue pipe, the new one. So I should be able to crimp on the PEX fittings at the top while the panel is attached. So I'm thinking if I attach a hose to the new connection, attach it to this one just loosely, put everything back in place and then I can crimp those fittings. Different plan. I'm gonna remove this new pipe section here, PEX pipe, and I will replace it with with this vinyl tube, obviously a little bit longer than this. And this gives me a nice swooping curve down to um, the external water connect. I think this is way more flexible than putting a few PEX pipes together and find the right connection. So with this one, I'm way more flexible. So I should be able to do the final assembly from here and from here. So I can screw the panel back in place with all these screws here at the bottom and at the top. This is the last connection I need to make. So this vinyl tube needs to be connected to this blue pipe. So I'm going to put an elbow in here and then it should slide right on and I can crimp it down. I have to cut this a little shorter and obviously I have to cut this one a little shorter. doing a test run, test fill, to see if there's any leaks. And so far, so good. The water is gurgling. I don't have a lot of water pressure and I don't have a lot of water flow down here. Um, that's what's causing all the gurgling, because there's a lot of air in the line. But other than that, um, I don't think I see any leaks. Of course, having the fresh water inlet down by the rear tire isn't ideal. There's a lot of dirt and road grime that sprays on it and that is for sure not something I want to have in my fresh water. So I put the quick disconnect into a plastic container and I need to unscrew it first before I can hook up and that keeps the inlet nice and clean. With a little bit of practice, it is not too hard to unscrew the lid of the container and then attach the hose with just one hand. And if I ever get tired of bending down, I can always run an additional hose to somewhere at the rear bumper or near the trailer hitch. But until then, I really like the new invisible external water connect. I also printed a new label I also printed a new label showing the additional positions of the red handle and what it is now used for. And what I haven't shown in the video earlier is that I also added a check valve, a backflow preventer, into this part here of the plumbing. It is not 100% needed for this new water connection, but it makes the whole fill process a little easier. And I also think it is a good idea to protect the external water system from any back pressure of your internal tank. It's maybe even a legal requirement, and if not, it should be one. Well, and that's all I had for today. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.